Welcome to the O'Connor Elder Law Channel. I'm your host, Melissa O'Connor. I'm a Florida-based elder law attorney who does estate planning, focusing on long-term care needs, commonly referred to as Medicaid planning, and I do probate, and I do it well. Today, I wanted to talk to you about the importance of a durable power of attorney, especially when you are faced with a dementia and Alzheimer's diagnosis. But before I do, I wanted to invite you to schedule a free strategy session with me at eldermeeting.com. So I frequently help families who are facing the news that their loved one has a diagnosis of cognitive decline, whether it's categorized as Alzheimer's disease or some sort of other dementia. And the statistics are staggering. One in three Americans um, will die, older Americans will die with um, Alzheimer's or a, or a um, dementia diagnosis. And there are over 11 million unpaid caregivers here in the United States providing care to their loved ones that have such diagnoses. And that co constitutes about $257 billion wor worth of value of work that families are providing to their elderly um, relatives providing care for them. And so one of the major things that we face as elder law attorneys um, when we have clients who have this diagnosis is to make sure that we can immediately put in place a durable power of attorney. Get that person an agent who can stand in their shoes and make decisions for them and make those judgment calls when they don't have the ability to do it. And you might be wondering, how can you do that when you have a diagnosis as of, of a, a dementia? And it really um, has to do with the individual person. At the time that we are signing a durable power of attorney document, they need to be of sound mind at that moment. And so if any of you um, have people in your life that have this disease, you know that they have moments of clarity, that they are great and you're like, oh, you know, mom or dad is back. It's so good to see them. And then later in the day or even the next day, the disease takes over and um, they're not the same person anymore. And so when you see these, these slips or these changes, um, we as elder law attorneys want to make sure that while they are having a good day and while they are of sound mind and, and are fully cognizant of what's going on and can make decisions, that at that juncture that we are able to put in place the protections that they really need to be able to help the family avoid a, a guardianship proceeding that would um, likely be their future if the cognitive decline progresses so greatly that we no longer get these moments of goodness, these moments of, oh great, you know, we're having a great day and it's so good and maybe, you know, maybe we'll just be, be okay. And so I recently was able to help a family that um, their loved one has this diagnosis. Um, they found that the person has responded well to some medication that they were trying. And so we were so thrilled because we do know that their house was for sale, um, because the two story um, was no longer safe for this family member. And so they were going to downsize out of the family home that they raised their family in to a safer um, single story condominium. And um, there was concern about how are we going to handle this closing, you know, is this is touch or go. And, um, and so they were super happy when they realized that the medication that, um, that their mom was being prescribed was, was, was working great. And I said, well, this is the time. Let, let's do it while we're having um, a great response to our medicine and while we're having a really great um, period. And so we put the protections in place and everybody took a deep sigh of relief. And um, I encourage you that it's not the time to be cheap um, when you are putting in place these durable powers of attorney because you want them to be comprehensive. You want them to be able to have all the statutory superpowers. You want them to be properly executed. You want them to um, stand up to any challenges, um, should there be any. So um, while I encourage you to make sure that you have these things in place, and I do not want you to think that just because you have a diagnosis 
of dementia or Alzheimer's that that is a 100% preclusion to exercising such a document, um, that you do get a uh, counsel from an elder law attorney to be able to help you with the process. I hope that this information has been helpful to you. If it has, I ask that you like and share with others. And as always, you can schedule a free strategy session with me at elderneeting.com. Thanks for joining me.